If you're suffering from low back pain, then watch this video right now for a comprehensive overview, including why your back hurts, the actual root causes, and why common approaches fail, and our holistic approach for lasting results. Hello there, welcome. Coach E here for Precision Movement. And today I'd like to give you a comprehensive overview of low back pain and our approach that has proven to get lasting results for people. And the reason why I wanna do this is to give you just a high level conceptual understanding of low back pain so that you understand why you're doing what you're doing and you understand the path to long-term results so you don't get caught up in gimmicks and fads and things that won't give you the results based on your time and effort invested. So let's get right into it. Let's start off with why your back hurts. There are two main reasons. One is overload of passive structures like the discs, the ligaments, the cartilage. And when those structures get overloaded, they can wear out, they get inflamed and painful. Number two is overload of the active structures, which are the muscles. Now this could be seen as just like if you work out and you lift some heavy weights, your muscles can get sore. That's known as DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. That's a normal thing and those muscles will heal. It could also come from chronic overuse of those muscles. And why that happens, we'll get into in a second, but the changes in the muscle itself are different when it's chronic versus acute, but you don't really need to know that. You just need to know that it's either coming from passive structures or active structures. And those are kind of all the structures around the spine anyway. Now, why does that actually happen? The actual root causes of overload of passive structures an overload of active structures, the muscles. The first one could be weakness. So if muscles are weak, then they're more easily overloaded. So getting muscles strong, that's important. Another thing that can happen is that if muscles are weak, if certain muscles are weak, other muscles can kick in and compensate for those weak muscles. And that can result in further changes that we're gonna talk about a little bit more. But weakness is one. Number two, a lack of mobility, specifically hip mobility. If your hips are immobile, let's say, then the movement, that mobility that you need to perform a task has to come from somewhere. And oftentimes, whenever we have a restriction in mobility, the compensation happens either above or below the joint that's restricted. So you could have problems with your knees or you could have problems with your lumbar spine. That's the joint, next joint up. So a lack of mobility is a cause of low back pain. Number three, poor movement patterns. If you're just because of whether it's a sport that you play that results in the same repetitive movements over and over, a job that you do that has you doing using a same movement pattern that might put overload on the passive or active structures that can cause low back pain. So it's your movement patterns or your activation patterns. Our acronym for that is MAPS, movement and or activation patterns. A fourth one is imbalances and imbalances around a joint, whether it's a strength imbalance or a length imbalance. So the mobility of that joint, those can result in low back pain and excess stress on the lumbar spine. So imbalances, we've got poor posture and alignment. So I'll just write posture, which covers posture and alignment. Now, the reason why I wanted to just list those out really high level is to illustrate why the common approaches fail. So what are the common approaches? Number one, we've got rest. Number two, I hear this all the time in the locker room, stretches, stretching. Number three, we've got painkillers. So that's when it's bad enough that you gotta go to the doctor. And oftentimes the doctor will recommend painkillers. Number four, the doctor might also recommend injections. That's like steroids, PRP, those kinds of things. Number five, the doctor may also recommend, or you might go yourself to a manual therapist. So that could be a massage therapist, a chiropractor, or a physio. 
the next one might be recommended by those therapists. That's exercises. I'm going to start that one because I'm going to talk about why exercise often fails for people. And the last one is surgery. These are all the common approaches to dealing with low back pain. The thing is, if we look at it, and we look at this other list, the actual root causes of low back pain, we can see that this one, this one, this one, this one, this one outside of the exercise piece, and this one don't address these root causes because these root causes are related to how your body functions, your musculoskeletal system, and basically how you move. Rest, stretching, painkillers, injections, manual therapy like chiropractic adjustments and surgery do not change how you're moving your body. This is the most important piece. These things can help you to deal with symptoms. They can help to decrease your pain. And that's an important piece, but it's not going to get to the root causes of the issue. So even if they address your pain and you don't address the root causes, that pain is likely to come back down the road. Now, one thing that I did want to get into before we talk about our approach for lasting results is a study and some studies that I found on a term called sedentarism because sedentarism is basically somebody who is sedentary, not, move, not moving around a lot. And that's one main cause of these things, weakness, decreased mobility, movement or activation patterns, imbalances, posture. Being sedentary can negatively impact all of those things, especially sitting. Because when you're sedentary, what are you doing? You're usually not standing there all day. You're sitting down, you're loafing around, you're not moving. So sedentarism is something that's really important to address to prevent these things from happening. Now, one study that I found that was done during the COVID lockdowns where you could see the increase in sedentarism on people and the effects of that showed that muscle wasting occurs rapidly, being detectable within two days of inactivity. This is huge. Just two days of being inactive and sitting around can result in muscle wasting, also known as atrophy, and when your muscles get smaller, they're going to be weaker. So multiply that by however many days that you've maybe been act inactive in the past. And that's something that we have to address. But while we can change how sedentary we are going forward, this won't fix the changes that have already happened because of sedentariness in the past. And that brings us to our approach that will help you to get lasting results. Now, our approach is centered around exercise, and I put the asterisk over here for a reason, because one thing I wanted to mention is that there are other approaches that work and work pretty well. And all those approaches tend to focus on neutral spine core stability. That's keeping your spine and your posture in this one position, and then moving around like this all day long. When you're bending, you're lifting, you're playing sports, you're trying to golf with a neutral spine, that's great, and that can be a bit of a band-aid, and it's actually necessary for a period of time to allow those passive structures especially to heal. But it's not something that's really practical for everyday life or realistic for everyday life, because you've got to get into a car, you've got to get into funky positions to stuff the kids into their car seats. Playing sports, rotation is such an important part of all sports, and if you're limiting yourself and you're not getting that rotation that you can get through the spine, then you're limiting your performance and limiting your performance isn't fun. So our approach brings in movement of the spine, but it brings it in at a specific time after we've stabilized and after we've allowed those tissues to heal. This is our program, the low back pain solution. And I just want to walk you through it so you see exactly how everything's laid out and why it's laid out as it is. We start off with some assessments. And there are two assessments and they serve two purposes. One is to place you in the right spot in the program. And the other is to tell you what category of low back pain you have. And there are three different categories, flexion dysfunction, extension dysfunction, and compression dysfunction. And it's really important to understand what type of low back pain you have because that will help you to adjust your movements and your activities of daily living and also the exercises that you do. After those quick assessments, then you get into the exercises. 
And if you've got severe pain, you're gonna start in the acute pain phase. The reason why is because it's difficult to perform exercises when you're in pain. So if you're trying to address these root causes like weakness, decreased mobility, imbalances, posture, or poor movement or activation patterns, you can't do it effectively when you're in too much pain because you'll just be limited in how much you can do. So we've gotta do gentle exercises, gentle movements, and incorporate other strategies to as quickly as possible get your pain to a level where you can start doing exercises that will address the root causes. So once you're out of the acute pain phase or if you don't have acute pain, then you're gonna start in the rehab phase. And this is where we focus on neutral spine core stability and training multi-dimensional core stability. Your core and being stable in the core you have to be stable in all dimensions. So if forces are trying to push me back, if forces are trying to rotate me, you've gotta have stability in all of those different planes of motion, because if you don't, that's gonna put stress on those passive structures in the spine that are most often the root cause of low back pain. We're gonna work on hip mobility, because when your hips are mobile, they're gonna take more load, decreasing the load and the stress that goes through the lumbar spine, allowing any damaged tissues there to heal. We're also gonna focus on posture and alignment because if you've got poor posture, let's say you've got rounded shoulders, that right there, that position is gonna put more load on the lumbar spine and those muscles and the passive tissues. So if you don't address posture, then you're increasing the load that is going through the lumbar spine and that's either gonna prevent or delay your progress. So that's the rehab phase in a nutshell. Those are the things we address and that typically takes anywhere from two to four months to complete. Once you're done the rehab phase and you've done it well, then it's time to move to what we call the resilience phase. And this is where we start to incorporate movement of the spine. And the reason why it we place it at the end here and we don't start moving the spine early on is because when you're moving the spine, if you're stretching the ligaments and they're already damaged or you're stretching and stressing the discs out and they're already irritated, that movement is gonna further irritate those tissues. So the two to three months that you're in the rehab phase and focused on neutral spine core stability, those tissues are allowed to heal. Then when they're healed and we start to stress them and we start to move and pull on those tissues in the resilience phase, then they're, they're able to adapt and get stronger. Passive tissues, just like muscles, can adapt and get stronger. It just takes longer, it's a bit of a slower process, and you have to go at it more gradually. Otherwise, you risk overloading those tissues again. So that's what you're gonna go through in the resilience phase, and by working and stressing those passive tissues, you're gonna build up strength and resilience in them so that when you get into those positions and movements, whether in sport or everyday life, those tissues can handle it. And this is a big shift in my approach over the years since I first lear started learning about low back pain rehab at the University of Waterloo. And it's what's resulted in me now having 100% confidence in my low back and in its ability to withstand whatever it is I I want to throw at it. A couple other elements that I think are really, really important in our approach and the way that we deliver it to you online is that it's time efficient and it's more time efficient than our previous programs. We were launched, we launched two previous programs around low back pain in the past, the first one in 2010. And time efficiency is really important because if you can't stick to the routines, you're not gonna get the results. Our routines take just 15 to 30 minutes to complete. You can do them at home with minimal equipment, so it, it's not gonna be a big investment to set yourself up with the equipment that you need to do at home. And because of this, you can be consistent, you can build up gradually over time, the endurance, the strength, the mobility, restore your posture, restore the imbalances. You can gradually build that up over time, which will ingrain that and burn that into your neuromuscular system so that the new ways of moving are habitual. And related to that, we've really streamlined our delivery of the program so it's super easy to follow. You can follow it on the web, you can follow it in our RomCoach app, and the videos are short and sweet. They're concise, they include all the information you need to be able to perform the exercises properly, but they're only about a minute long. So you're not gonna sit there watching videos for, and watching me talk on and on, kinda like I am now. I kinda wanna wrap this up for you. So, 
that's how our approach has evolved. That is our approach. And that's what I want you to start following to take care of your low back pain for good. Because I can tell you from experience how debilitating and depressing suffering from low back pain is. And I can also tell you how freeing and how great it feels to know that I can do whatever it is I want to do without throwing my back out and being forced to sit on the sidelines. So that's what the low back pain solution is all about. I invite you to sign up for it so I can guide you through this process. And I'd love to hear about your results following this program in the future. Thanks for listening and I hope to see you on the inside.